Batman and Robin number nine, written by Peter Tomasi, art by Lee Garbett and Andy Clark. Uh, this is a tie-in to Night of the Owls. This issue deals with General Benjamin Burroughs, who I don't think is a pre-established character, but whatever, I, maybe he is. Uh, so we open up with Robin just with a metal detector down in some sewers when all of a sudden he gets Alfred's call and just like, hey, Alfred, uh, okay, I, I, I'm ready to help. Give me somebody who's who's on this list. By the way, where'd you even get this list? And he's like, I got it from a Talon's armrest, anything. Uh, so there's a Major General, Benjamin Burroughs, who is in charge of 15,000 enlisted personnel in just Gotham alone. He definitely needs to survive for whatever reason, and you're closest to his location, Damien. You got it? And he's like, yeah, I got it. And Damien activates a jetpack, which I didn't know he had, but he jetpacks over to where uh, General Major is, who's doing some sort of training routine with a whole platoon. And as he's criticizing some of the platoon people, they get attacked by something. And Robin arrives on the jetpack, and he's like, that's a Talon. Talon's here for you. We got to go. And immediately some men trying to disarm uh, Robin, and he just turns the tide on them, disarms them. And he's like, okay, do you believe me now? Like, can we just listen to me instead of fighting against this? And he's like, why should I Why should I believe you? And he's like, because your name's on a hit list. It's an elite assassin from the Court of Owls. And he's like, the old nursery rhyme? And he's like, yeah, I guess. I don't know. Can we just Can we just do the thing? And at this point, the uh, they're like, okay, well, I'll just climb down the ladder. I'll get my platoon, and we'll just go to the army base because that's, like, super-duper secure. But as they do so, the ladder is cut and they're trapped up on this scaffolding with only one escape route, which of course the Talon is climbing his way up. So everyone switches over to live ammo because they were just using blanks before. And of course it's doing nothing to stop him because he has a massive healing factor. So Robin fixes back up uh, his jetpack and he puts it back on and he's like, all right, come on, jump on the jetpack, we're gonna go. And he's like, I can't leave my men behind. But the men are like, it's been an honor serving with you, sir. And he's like, all right, I guess I can leave my men behind. So he flies off with Robin. But as he does so, the talent takes notice, does this running leap and grabs onto Robin's jetpack just enough for them to start plummeting out of the air. They aren't landing directly next to each other, though. So they've got a little bit of time to uh, pick up their stuff and see where they're going. General, of course, falls unconscious and... Robin gets the location of the command post, which is apparently five miles up the river. So we get one page here of just a couple by the riverside roasting some marshmallows. And she's like, oh, just brown mine a little, honey. And he's like, yes, dear, I'm a master at roasting marshmallows. And Talon comes up, cuts off their heads and leaves. It's never mentioned again. And I don't know why this page is here, but regardless, it happened. So the entire platoon, after they were called on uh, because of the other platoon being attacked and then Major General being flown away by Robin, they're all put on high alert. They've all got live ammo going on. And as they're looking at for whatever it is they're trying to find, Robin shows up with um, the Major General on like a makeshift little hospital, I don't know what you want to call it, a cot, whatever it is. And he's dragging him through the woods. And he's like, okay, here's the deal. We have no time for an action report. General's unconscious. The assassin's on our trail. I need you guys to, to set up a defensive mode. And he's like, why should we listen? What are you, 10? We're not going to listen to you. And he's like, I have been trained by a master assassin's guild for all my life. I know how to kill you immediately right now. And you're going to listen to every goddamn word I say. Do you understand that? <laughs> and so they do it. And they set up a defensive thing. Um, eventually, they get sight of the Talon. And they do this thing where, like, as one group reloads, the other group is firing, and they make sure that they don't ever let up for a second. And during this time, Major General wakes up. He's like, when did you get a field promotion? He's like, the moment you fell unconscious. Now shut up and let me do my plan. And the Talon is using bows and arrows to just take out each of the people one by one until finally they are running out of ammo entirely. And then the Talon just walks out and it's like skulking towards the group and he's like all right man we're out of ammo you know what to do bayonets at the ready and they just hold a charge at the talon and some of them land a few of them but most of them get attacked by the talon in fact i'm pretty sure in the end all of them are attacked by the talon and the talon makes his way over to uh Burroughs and he's like it's been 236 years but i'm here to kill you wilkins and he's like my name 
My name is Burroughs. And he's like, ah, that's what you think. And then in two pages that were done in, by a completely different artist, this is by, uh, I think, Andy Clark. Very well done. Looks great. It's just descri- describing how back during the Revolutionary War, there was a spy named Edwin Wilkins who was drafted by General Washington himself to go send some information. And he passed off this information to Alexander Hamilton, and it went off fine, but then he was immediately arrested by... Um, the British. And apparently Washington had promised Washington had promised Wilkins a plot of land that was super duper useful to the Court of Owls. So just in case this revolution actually worked, because the Court of Owls were on the side of Britain, I guess, just in case this actually worked, they needed Wilkins dead. So he killed Wilkins in his sleep, waited a few years, killed the rest of his family to make sure he didn't have any heirs, but then one young boy survived and was adopted into the Burroughs family. Therefore, this guy, a descendant of that kid, has a rightful claim to that land. And now he's going to kill, be killed because the Talon decides, I guess I need to finish my original job. Despite the fact that I'm pretty sure that land probably belongs to, like, the Joker at this point. But regardless, yeah, that happened. So then Robin fires a battering, or a whatever you want to call it, a grappling hook, through one of the Talon's eyes. He turns his head 180 degrees like an owl and then starts attacking Robin. Robin hoists him up on a tree and then goes over, grabs the Talon sword and cuts off the Talon's head. And then he just walks away from the Talon's body with Burroughs. And he's like, are you sure that you killed that thing? He's like, it was already dead. And that's it. That's where it ends. It's just he, he, he just strung this thing up, cut off his head and then walked away. Badass, but still... I don't know. It's something. So, uh, no, overall, um, I give this one like a... Uh, anything 6 feels too low, but anything 8 feels too high, so I guess 7. But, like, it, there were parts of it that felt good, but then it just all of a sudden is like, and we're done. Like, that's it. It's just a very quick... Like, he gave his explanation, Robin fought him for two pages, and then we're done. And it just felt really quick right there at the end. Like, all of that intro stuff could have been, why did we need that Roasting Marshmallows page? That was what, that's the one that really got me. Like, I really feel like we could have had an extra little thing, but instead we roasted marshmallows. So, yeah, I'll give it a 7. It's, it's good, but, like, it could have been a whole lot better if it was just paced ever so slightly, ever so slightly tighter. And the art, uh, pretty fantastic throughout, but I will give special shout-out to Andy Clark on those two page spread of the history because that's just really good looking overall so yeah another night of the owls completed